Efral to Zebrakadaya, Mesadobele, Shetaberiande, Serehende Lebede, Sarutobe Hekaluse, and Gagada, Sutanada, Zebrado, Zembrado, Zembra Tobe, Egalega de Leboriam Ropelea, Gagonezo, Ento Lebo, E, Kakude, Zakude Gadia, Zakude Gaha, Ecu de Lebodoya, Filamanto Leporuca Barriante, Lega de Godia, La Gabodonde, Ale Coponde, Sarabagaga Barriam Roque Polecete, Egagagagagaya. Something is happening to you. Let up in your spirit. The spirit is gaining ascendancy over the soulless realm. Barusa, Grapate, Bracapote, Brekapototo, Liga Gagabode, Santo Pekilaya, Sarabagondeleme, Ehehehe, Sundele Brotapa, Frelege de Lemoto, Indroli Brate Lemo, Zuzapoti, Sharapala, Greboroto Pelianto. I will give it praise. I will give it praise. I will give it praise and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Speak to us. Speak to us. And we are ready to receive. And not just to receive, and also to obey. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let us honor Jesus, the head of the church. Hallelujah. And you may be seated in Jesus' precious name. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing to have, you know, uh, all of you here this afternoon. And I know that others are on the way uh, to join us, but we don't have uh, much time to delay. Um, we initially practically planned this meeting for the entire workforce of the house of course we extended we share this broadly to other people that want to be part of learning and being trained to be fruitful so like i've said believe believers meeting where people that are already in the in the kingdom people that are already enlisted as disciples can uh, get trained strengthened how many of you know that uh, God has given us people to equip us according to the scripture? I mean, you go for conferences, you go for seminars, you attend different, you know, um, how do I call it now, event, you know, to prepare you for a success secularly. And we need to do more of that in the church so that the people that God has called can be profitable. And Jesus says something, I want to quickly you know, read this popular scripture, John chapter 15. And that's why the theme of this uh, meeting this afternoon is fruitfulness. Hallelujah. God wants us to bear fruit. Amen. God wants us to bear fruit. And um, Jesus said it uh, in John chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Now, let's read in King James, you know, not, not in Amplify, except I give instruction. Uh, it says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Uh, let's keep reading. I just want to emphasize one thing there. Jesus speaking here, and he said, every branch, who is speaking here? Jesus speaking here, listen very carefully. Jesus said, every branch in me. That is, you know, we claim that we are in Christ, which is a new covenant. I'm in Christ. Christ is in me. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, every branch in me. Does that sound like new covenant truth? Hallelujah. He said, every branch in me that beareth no fruit, it taketh away. Hallelujah. Come on, say with me, my place will not be taken. Say, my place will not be taken. How many of you know that God's will and assignment cannot be destroyed? If you are the one that God has assigned to do anything and you refuse to do it, if it is God's will and plan, it cannot be destroyed. That means you will be replaced. Say with me in the name of Jesus. My place will not be taken. I will not be replaced. This is very important for you to know in any capacity where you are. Jesus said, because the reason is this. The reason why the person is either replaced, taken away, is because God's plan cannot suffer loss. God's business cannot suffer. God has an assignment. It must be fulfilled. It must be fulfilled. And that's why Mordecai said to Esther, 
There is a destiny. There is an assignment. If you don't play your part, God will do his part in such a way that his plan, his will will come to fulfillment. And that is the confidence I have as a leader. Knowing the mind of the Father. If I'm doing my part, if I'm doing what the Father has me to do, there will always be a replacement. If something, for whatever reason, if I'm in obedience, if I'm doing what the Heavenly Father has me to do, he said, I will make sure that my agenda is not destroyed. Amen. So every branch in me that bears no fruit, he take it away. And every branch that bears fruit, I love that, he purges it. So either way, you don't remain the same. You see, one is taken away, and the one that's even bearing fruit, it will do something about it. I love that. Glory be to God. Are you excited that you are doing something for Jesus? Jesus Christ, I'm not going to leave it the same. Because he wants you to bear abundance. He wants you to have more. Hallelujah. And he said, a project. They will teach us more about many things today. But I'm just saying to you that God's way for us is that it might bring forth more fruit. God wants us to have more. It doesn't matter what you are doing right now. At any level, God said, more can be done. More can be done. And I believe prophetically, they will be speaking to us as a church. They're challenging us, even your own area of ministry. God wants to move us to a new level. And I'm trusting God that that will happen even in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, shout with me, fruitfulness. Oh, say to your neighbor, I have fruitfulness on my mind. I have increase on my mind. I have productivity on my mind. I want to change level. I want to move to a new level. I want to advance. Is there anyone tired of where you are? You want to see more for Jesus? You want to see more for Jesus, for your life, for your ministry, you know, for whatever you ask it to do? That is my desire. You know, but let me read the last scripture. So I'm not the one preaching. You know, we have a grace in the house. Amen. We have a grace. I know we say this a lot, and many people think, you know, well, it's one of the, you know, words that pastor use, you know, that this man is grace, that woman is grace, you know, hallelujah. Now, but I love the way the Passion Translation put it. And I want us to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, as I invite and introduce to us, we are going to have our media introduction tomorrow about the grace of God. And um, uh, we have been so blessed by their presence with us. We, we, we have been so loved and been encouraged. And as a growing entity, you know, they have seen what we haven't seen. They have been to places we haven't been. And they instruct, caution, challenge, encourage, so that, you know, our sheep sailing will not capsize. You know, that we will be steady and arrive on time. And that is what God will do when he gives you covering and gives you people that he has invested in. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says something very, very powerful. I know I told you to open the Ephesians 4, verse 11. The Bible makes us understand, you know, that uh, uh, there was a time Aquila and Priscilla, they observed a man called Apollos. I don't know if you know that Apollos, the Bible says, a man mighty in word. No description. The Bible says they looked at him. They observed him and they realized that he has limited revelation. Amen? The Bible said they brought him to themselves. Now, I was telling people, I said, that means the man was willing. You have many people in the church, they are so arrogant that the little they know. Are, are you getting right now? Yes, sir. Now, now, I don't want to go into that scripture. That will be a whole lot of conversation. The Bible said he was mighty in world. His exegesis, his ability, oratory skills, an ability. But I don't know if you know that that's not what makes ministry. <laughs> it is good, though. Don't, don't get me wrong. You need the combination of all of this because God wants us to be skilled and to be able to know how to do our presentation very well. But it is the doctrine they are looking at, right? And they realize that the doctrine of this guy is limited and it will not be able to advance God's will and plan. The Bible said they brought him closer. And then they expanded unto him the way of the Lord more accurately. Now, that is why, because this man does not have full understanding. Because the scripture says he knew only the doctrine of John the Baptist. That means he doesn't have full understanding of the new covenant truth. Hallelujah. And that makes us understand. Go and read the scripture. 
that the man, after his encounter with them, he established the churches in the grace of God. Go and read it. In the grace of God. That means he was exposed to the truth for the now. That is necessary, not only to advance him, but to also bless people that he come in contact with. No wonder, you know, Jesus, through Apostle Paul, also was ministering to some people, John chapter 19, sorry, after Apostle chapter 19, and he said, you know, who baptized you? Who's baptism? You know, Bible says he met some disciples, isn't it? And Bible makers understand, they said they have not even heard if there's a Holy Spirit. They even call it a Holy Spirit. You know, at times you can listen to what people are saying and you realize that they are not yet perfected in this understanding. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. God has sent to us a grace that I've seen, understood, where many people fail in ministry. What makes some people to get stuck? Churches that bear fruit to stop bearing fruit. Please, forget about who is there, who is not here. You are going back home, change. Amen. I'm ready to receive, taking my note. I want to be better. Now, so, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Bible says, and he has appointed, the person translation, and he has appointed some with grace. When you read it, you know, King James Version is different. But this one, I love it. It said, he has appointed some with grace to be apostles, and some with grace. We are talking about grace here. If, if the grace is not there, the result will be different. Amen? Say with me, we are going to have an encounter with grace. Now, Bible says he has grace some with, to be apostles, some with grace to be prophets, some with grace to be evangelists, some with grace to be pastors, and some with grace to be what? To be teachers. It's about grace. And who put the grace on the individual? Jesus himself, the head of the church. And read verse 12 with me. What is the purpose? And this is the desire. This is what I've prayed for this morning. And they are calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works, own work, own works of ministry. As they do this, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. That means, contrarily, if they do not, with the grace that they have, prepare us for the work that he has given to us, what will happen to the body of Christ? That means we will not be enlarged and we will not be built up. Center of life, we want to be enlarged. You want to be built up. And you personally, you want to be enlarged. You want to be built up. Join me with reference as we stand up together to receive the gift God has given to us, the grace. Father to fathers, mentor to mentors, pastor to pastors, a generational gift. We honor you today and we thank you, sir, and we appreciate you. Please join me with Jesus' joy to receive again. Our Father and the Lord, Apostle Israel Hammer. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, when the Spirit of God moves, it's simply amazing. I've set out a plan. When I take over, I will pray. <laughs> I've set out a plan. Before we pray, I'm going to speak to you from John 15. <laughs> Please give me that John 15 again from Passion Translation. 1 to 4. 1 to 4. Please be seated. I will get you up to, to, to speed. I am a true sprouting vine. And the farmer who tends the vine is my father. Two, he cares for the branches connected to me. Hallelujah. Uh, I told myself, don't do this now. I don't want to talk about the fact that God cares for you. He does. Amen. Uh, you may be in a very difficult situation right now, and you're wondering, Lord, where's your care? Mm. Uh, if you had been left alone, even in this mess, nothing of you will remain. 
It's God's care. You know, Job found himself in a mess. Uh, and God told the devil, don't go this far. Yes, Toss far. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? If Job was left with the devil. <laughs> now, when Job was going through that, he didn't know. Well, you and I know now about Job's story. So you're going through and you don't know when your story will be written, those who will read will see. So the care of God make our car pass. The, the care of God you can't buy it with money. No one can earn it. No one can deserve it. He is not cajoled to care for us. He voluntarily. Out of his own volition. And if God is the one that is caring for you. There are no gray areas. Because he is the perfection of beauty. Everything he does is perfect. Correct? <laughs> he cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches. Hello. When you are lifted and propped up. I have to use this translation because the other translations gives us a situation of loss. You are taken away. Is that not so? You are destroyed. Because of his care. Even in your fruitless state. Even in your useless state. Even in my useless state. He props us. You know when you prop up somebody. What I do? You're giving strength to it. Is that not so? The care of our God. And pruning every fruitful branch. To yield. A greater harvest. Rise on your feet. It's a good place to pray. <laughs> and why are we praying? Let me quickly make this. See, we think that prayer is asking God. That's where perhaps some people understanding. No, no, no. See, prayer is more than asking God. Hello? Prayer is what? More than asking God. Prayer is God's platform provided for you to come up to exercise his authority upon your life. There are many things God wants us to be in charge of. Are you with me? You just do it. If you are a parent and you go where I come from, they have these um, uh, days where is it a uh, house sports. And you go and you're watching your child and the child is performing. What happens to your heart? Huh? What happens to your heart? Yeah, that's when 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 we come to that platform and we begin to happen, God <laughs> we call it Totori where I come from. <laughs> it is his whole body. That's my son. That's my daughter. You are not asking him. And, and not understanding that we think that prayer is work. So many of us have seen prayer as chore. We've been asking, asking, asking. God has not answered. If he does not answer the ones we have prayed for since, why am I praying for more? Mm, prayer is not all about asking. Hello. It's an opportunity to climb and be a God. Oh. Ye are gods. Ye all are the offsprings. Sons. 
of the Most High. And because we don't know that, we die like men. Prayer is an opportunity to be us. That's why some of us can sit down the chair eight hours. We are just, <laughs> we are just pushing and we have, not, we have not broken out in sweat yet because you know the journey is far. When something is doing you, except you don't understand. Somebody said to me, no, in this place we don't pray like that because there's no Nepal problem. We and I said, well, no, we never pray for Nepal not to take light or to bring light. Right, there's no, there's no food problem. We said we are not praying to eat. We are praying to establish ourselves in the corridors of power. We prayed that long because when Moses came down, what happened to his face? <laughs> they could not look at him. They had to cover him with a veil. That's what prayer does. You carry light, I carry light. My light blinds you, your light blinds me. So we don't see. When you meet witches and wizards, as a child of God, even in your falling state, they know. They know. Now think about it, that you, you are one who is operating on the platform that God has given to be God. You enter, trouble happens. Are you with me? They just know this one. Say with me, Father, I know you care for me. My fruitfulness shall be enlarged tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to begin to declare, begin to declare, begin to declare, begin to declare, begin to declare. Lord, I know you care for me. My fruitfulness shall be enlarged. I can't hear you pray now. Maso kamagadagaya. Iteke prolus kabaligi labatoya. Are you speaking? All of creation eagerly is awaiting our manifestation as the sons of God. And this is how we manifest. Hey! Maya Kazagada. Yes, because he cares for me. Kamos Rabi Balaboya Tataya. Repele Gazabeto La Bragada. Makasabata Katete Kialatoy. My fruitfulness shall be enlarged. It shall be a greater harvest for me. Repa Kataya. In every dimension of my life. In every facet of my existence. Reko Tobi Balatoya. And Nipala Kaska Manigla Batoya. Eye Shadebra Dizia de Brigodobos Kaba. Ipakula Teya Nagri Gianataya. Yes! In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Say with me, every issue hindering my fruitfulness, I decimate. Say with me, Father, every issue hindering my fruitfulness in this life, I decimate. When? Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lift up your voice. You see, we are not calling on God to do for us. We are doing it because he has given us, given us authority. He has given us authority. Hey, they cannot hinder me. I am not under their control. I refuse that their enterprises be performed over my life. Whatever issues are, paralyzed. Tampering with my fruitfulness. And no separate Mikela Toya. Ah! Kaloba Zabataya.
Yes. In Jesus, matchless name, we pray. I declare, I can't hear you. I declare that everything about my life shall flourish because I'm a fufu fan. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, can you make that declaration? Lekato Magada. That includes the works of your hands. That includes your family. That includes your job. It includes your ministry. E Barunata. In Nepal, it is Malakataya. E Rele de Grede Yajata Gyan Dilibo. Maso Bredigiana Tata Kumalate. E Yaketagaya. E Kete Kete Lialala. E Sobradi Telebron to Lubregea. E Kamana Nabosa. Barula Mamakiala Te. E Yazakabea. Come on, let's go a little bit higher. Can you go a little bit deeper? Jesus, Jesus, Barukama, Eketeki Malato, Mingalato Mikilala Lo Salaba. Hey! I am a fruitful vine. What are you talking about? Ako Sakaba Yagada. Kerina Nini Kibalato. In Jesus. Much less name we pray. Amen. Say with me, Father, I put together everything in my life that is out of order right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, lift up your voice. <laughs> Come on, put together. Come on, put together. Rearrange them. They cannot be disorder in your life to torment and, and, and truncate your fruitfulness for what? Leesa, maon seata, ente itelia, elipanini kabalato, eronki si palato inatayade, erembelia la susama kabatoya, e gada gaza bragada, i kamokas kabaliglato, beri kamana gazabato lobrienate, e yedede. Pull them together. No more disorder around you in your finances. No more disorder in your dealings. No more disorder concerning your household. No more disorder. You put them together. Come on, child of God. You put them together. Command the lines to fall for you in pleasant places. That's what the Bible says. In your body, in your mind. The confusion, it shall abate right now. That fear in your heart, it has no room. That doubt, it melts by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Finally, you want to say with me, Father, I shift things around for my progress right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, shift them around, shift them around, shift them around, shift them around. Everything, everything has to align with God's agenda for your life. Shift them, my God. <laughs> Come on, take authority. You are speaking as one with authority.
Shift them, shift them, shift them. Shift them your hands. Shift them. Shift them. Shift them. Your job. Katomagafe. Kamaro Kasi Palato. Come on, shift them. Shift them. Hey, take Kebo Sebralata. And Nateriala Lilibos Kabaya. It's all. Shift those hands off your life. That say they are holding you bound, you cannot go forward. For what? Shift them. Shift them. Every noise around you, creating distraction. Shift them. Everything the enemy has set up to block your view, shift it. The devil can, is a liar. He cannot bring your past and talk truncate your truth today. He cannot bring your past to truncate your today you want to shift your past out you want to shift your past out it's God it's God in the Christ in God he cannot shift it yesterday's failure cannot come to you today no way wrong patterns shift them they cannot repeat themselves anymore in your life Hey! Terrible experiences that are keeping you from going forward. Shift them. They can't hold you down anymore. Shift them. For whom the son has set free is free indeed. Thank you, my father. Jesus. Matchless name we pray. Help me just lift up your two hands towards me like this. I share with you a rekindling of your fire. I command your fires to be rekindled. I strengthen their embers. I command them to burn more intensely. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command your aura renewed. Let your presence torment every activity and every agent of the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. We give you praise, we give you glory. Jesus, much less name, we pray. Be seated in God's awesome presence. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Man of God, you're blessed. I was uh, talking to my host about you. That's the man of God I was telling about. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, I wanted to do something um, in a staccato fashion so that we can spread out on so many things since I'm not going to be here. God knows when. <laughs> but God says, no, try and have it structured. Amen. So I have to structure it, amen? amen? And to talk to you about the help of God. How many of us need help? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So that's what I want to do tonight. And then we will end with prayer again. Amen. Because from the things we'll be dealing with, we will need to pray for that help to be actualized. Amen. Amen. Psalms 46 verse 1. Psalms 46 verse 1. It's where I'm going to be. Um, pitching. It says God is our refuge and strength. A very present help. In trouble. 
And I reason that if we're going to be fruitful, given the present situation and circumstances of life, we need help. Amen? So, I, I want to share with you how you can attract divine help. Attracting divine help. Attracting divine help. Friends, I, I've been in ministry for a few years now. And I, I know that God's servants and indeed all of God's sons, and the word sons is gender insensitive, who are on duty for God in any capacity. All need one sort of help or the other in order to go to the next level. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I look through scripture, for example, it took Pharaoh's daughter to help Moses come into training for God's eternal agenda for his life. I don't believe her. <laughs> An unbeliever. Friends, it took Jethro to help Moses go to the next level. When, when Moses get bogged down with administrative aspects of his leadership to the Israelites. Friends, it took Moses to help Joshua become the leader he was created to be. It took Moses, friends, to help Moses, uh, Aaron, come into ministry. I mean, if before he met his younger brother, who they thought was lost, he was told that, Aaron, do you know that <laughs> you are going to be the first established priest of Israel? He will laugh you off and think, ah, you do take afternoon pan wine. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Friends, it took Saul. To train David for the throne. Help. It took Husha to answer the prayer of David to thwart the council of Ahitophel. Husha. He was not the king, he was simply a friend to the king. He was not even there when David prayed the prayer. But for that help, David would have been over. All the other things we read about uh, uh, Absalom dying, it won't happen. Because Ahitophel spoke the counsel as the counsel of God. If they had gone out that day, David and his troops would have been routed. To Kusha, to help David. Praise God. Friends, it took a common sick Egyptian to help David and his troops locate the men who burnt down Ziklag and took away their families. Help! <coughs> who needs help? We all. We all need help to go forward in this life. And I tell you, it's a delight to see God faithfully help his people. However, I have often wondered why this help of God does not get to every one of us. Help so abundant, yet so lacking in the lives of many 
all this. And I, I began to say, is God partial? And, and scripture says, no, it's uh, the word of God, you know, no longer, you know, powerful in itself to become each man's reality. Of course. So why is it that some have help and some don't? Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, I investigated the matter. I studied and researched the word of God. And I found that God has arranged help for us all. Amen? Amen. There's help for everyone. There's help for everyone. I tell you the truth. Uh, Psalms 124 verse 8. Psalms 24, verse 8. So our help is in the name of the Lord. Of the Lord. Psalm 1 to 4. Sorry, I'm not coming clear to that. Psalm 1 to 4. Media. 1 to 4. It says, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven on earth. Now, such a help ought not to fail. Are you with me? However, I also found in my studies and my research that there are 10 types of us. How many? How many? Who are regularly making it impossible for God's help to locate us. How they are so entrenched in certain attitudes or paradigms by reason of these attitudes or paradigms, they are themselves the impediment. To God's help, finding them. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved. These paradigms or attitudes stand in the way of God. Preventing the help he has sent to us. To take us to the next level from coming to our benefit unless we honestly make the necessary shift in our attitudes or paradigms. I tell you, God's help, though arranged for us all, will elude us. And tonight, I want to share with us these Ten type of people and lead us to pray concerning them. Hallelujah. Amen. If you ever find yourself as one of these ten types of people, please don't argue. Simply shift your attitude. Amen? Amen. Shift your paradigm and God's help will look at you. Amen. Number one, of these 10 people. Those who do not take responsibility for their lives. Men and women of God, ministers, servants of the Lord Most High, lovers of God, faithful, and yet, will not take responsibility for their lives. Friends, the first step in self-improvement is to remove all excuses for mediocrity or failure. Right. Hallelujah. Those that continually blame other people 
for their failures will never ever get to the next level. Leaders can complain about their challenges. I'm telling you, I'm one. Challenges about our unsupporting spouse. Challenges that we complain about the low income level of our congregants. Or if they are high level income, their unwillingness to give. The lack of staff. Or bad staff. Spiritual fathers who are oppressive. Mentors who are callous. I was growing up, I was told that only a bad man will quarrel with his tools. A bad workman. Only a bad workman will quarrel with his tools. I mean, I've seen people kick their car. What are you doing? The car didn't do nothing. Bang! The iPad hit the computer. It didn't do nothing. When I was watching the man of God, Without taking responsibility, he was beating the horse. <laughs> Why would he not move? Why? He didn't know his life was being spared. You remember him? Yes, sir. We need to take responsibility for our lives. That's where it starts. Life is too short to leave your life and your affairs in the hands of another man. Are you still with me here? Hello? Know that within every challenge is the seed of opportunity for success. All it requires is creativity to solve the problem. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you are getting results in your life that you don't like. And ask yourself, why am I getting this results that I don't like? Reflect. Go back and look at how you have done the things you did. You did them. Re-examine. Is it Thomas Edison? How many times? 99 times? Every failure gave him a clue to the success. He took responsibility. Are you still with me here? It was not the witch in his village. You know, until you understand that your gain is in your pain. You will discard your pain. That's rubbish. Very important that we understand. It was something that established this principle in a riddle. When in Judges 14, 14, he said, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. In your pain is your gain. No pain. Take responsibility for your life and do the needful. It is as you're doing the needful that God's help will look at you. While you are complaining, murmuring, no, no help will find you.
That's what we call the law of vibration and the law of attraction. It's what you vibrate that you attract. Complain, complain, complain. Failure, failure, failure. Hallelujah. Number two, those that do not have the heart to seek God. If you do not have the heart to seek God, you cannot locate God's help. The Bible teaches us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9, 10. Those who do not respect God enough to seek him and study his word so they can make wise decisions in life are violating scripture. Go home, look at Joshua chapter 1, 8 to 9. They cannot be located by God's help. Many of us study to preach without first studying to live. Have you been to church and a man of God preached and said, ah! You didn't come to God. He was talking about you. The word was for you. Why should the word not be for you first? Before it will be for Anna who didn't come to church. When we open the Bible, we must forget about everybody else. It's, it's our meal to feed us. It is after that we have been fed that we can feed others. For out of the abundance of the heart, when the heart is empty, Hallelujah. Amen. So we preach one thing and leave another. And they're just looking at us and they're wondering, who are these people? No. Those who do not obey what God requires for success have decided to try to be successful in life without God's blessings. Friends, they are doomed to fail because they have turned their back on God's help. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, those that create distance so they are not accountable. There are many of us who only let others get so close before cutting off the relationship. <laughs> I've seen many of them like that. They will come to me. Daddy, 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 daddy. After some time, they are gone. Many go from one mentor to another, from one pastor to the other, because they fear becoming too close to a particular leader who will hold them accountable. He came to me to submit to me. See, where are you coming from? Like, you know, his life has just been up and down. I said, I see so. <laughs> but God has told him to come to me and submit. And he came with his wife and son. I said, that's a good step. Took them in, prayed for them. And then 48 hours, barely, the wife has called me. Your son. I said, what has my son done? <laughs> she gave me a catalog. So I sent for him. I said, son, you want to die. The day as a man of God, you fight against your wife. Your ministry is over. You are dead. Say, which scripture is that? <laughs> I say, Bible tells us that we should never lay hands suddenly on any man. Because if a man cannot first be faithful 
in disciplining his own children. He cannot take care of the house of God. He said, that scripture is not relevant. I said, really? This discussion is over. These are the things your wife told me. Now, this is how I want you to do. A, B, C, D. He said, quiet for a while. He said, I'm sorry, I can't. Because she's the greatest trouble in my life. As I speak to you now, he's in Kujé prison. Wow. You, you know, <laughs> he left me, he went to submit to someone else, he left that one. I went to see my friend, Bob Alonge. He was canceling this couple. You remember, you remember that one? He was canceling this couple. Da, 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 da. He got to his abam. Please help me. <laughs> You're good with family. Help me. You're married longer than myself. Help me. So I invited them over. Daddy, 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 daddy. That's your boy. Of course. The next time I saw him, he's a big man of God. He prayed for, you know, the governor of Joss and the, the man won the election. He took him to Dubai. De, 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 de. Where is he today? <laughs> yeah, he's in Creek. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. See, when people do not hold themselves accountable to others, there's no hope for them to receive the help of God. You see, in all these guys, God sent me as a help to them. If they had lesson, they won't be where they are today. Accountability. Friends, I'm 64 years plus. Pastor Wally is still my father. <laughs> yes, sir. He was the chairman of my board. At 70, the constitution says he must resign. He has resigned. But his fatherhood has nothing to do with being a chairman of my board. Are you with me? If he says, Israel, I want to see you now, there must be flight. If there is no flight, I will make a call. I will make a call. And I have people that have PJ. They'll make it available to me. Those are credits that you keep for the rainy day. That's right. I will honor him. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I cannot say no. Yes, Are the Chris? <laughs> I'm accountable. My accountability does not mean that when he asks me what, I would speak my mind. But I'm as I'm speaking my mind, I'm also listening to what he is saying. Well, there have been many times I want to do things and he calls me to question. And you know, he will never tell you, don't do this, don't do this. He will tell you, if I were you, I've never said. Uh, Israel, if I were you, this is how I would look at it. He doesn't need to repeat it twice. Consider it done. <laughs> it's someone here wants accountability. Because I have submitted to him as my father. Oh, I've taken him places. I'm telling you. I've taken, I've taken him. Oh God, I've taken him places. He will tell you himself. Today, he is the convener of the Apostolic Coalition of Nigeria. I took him to Apostolic Coalition, International uh, coalition of apostles. I took him there. Had him recommended. You know, you have to have someone to recommend you. I recommended my father. And spoke to people to make sure when Nigeria was to be opened, they made him the leader. I'm accountable to him. It's someone here what I'm saying. It has, it has nothing to do with your privilege. It has nothing to do with who you are, what you think you are. No, it's submission is for your safety. Yes, 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 yes. Preach. 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 Pre
is for your safety. You want to be long in life. Stay accountable. Are you with me? You know, I, I've seen some run to mega church pastors who don't have the time to really take time to know them. When the conference is going on, you know, they are, they are the sons of the prophet. They carry mega church pastor. The man does not know you. The man does not know you. Praise God. <laughs> One is a friend, is, is a wife, is a, is a husband to my wife's friend. And the wife told him, go and submit to Apostle Baba. I'm saying, for what? It's Baba Deboe. So they will go to camp. When is camp meeting? The man doesn't know you. How come you cannot deal with your father directly and you call him father? How can he hold you accountable? There's so many. He doesn't know your name. That you're in the crowd does not make you. You know, it's the, like... The palace of a king. There are many children. But the king knows his children. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, if you live in rebellion against accountability, friend, God's help cannot look at you. Number four, those who insist on having a negative outlook on life. Tomorrow morning, we will deal with this in full. But let me just say, there are some people who refuse to exercise faith in God or think positively as the word of God commands us in Philippians for it. The reason is simple. They have a propensity to expect the worst in life by reason of terrible past experiences. They will always tell you, I know where I'm coming from. We've seen these things. Please hear me. It's a weird way some of us ministers, workers, leaders attempt to shield our emotions from the pain of disappointment. It's a very common practice with many of us in ministry. Just because someone disappointed you last time does not mean you'll be disappointed every time. Please forget the past and face your future with faith and hope. Amen? Amen? Jesus will often tell people that they will receive according to how they believed. Be it unto you according to your faith. He teaches us in Proverbs 23, 7. That's where I say we will be tomorrow. That as a person thinks in their heart, so they will be. God's help cannot locate a person who refuses to think God's thoughts about themselves and about their lives. Everything you see, trouble. Everything you see, evil. Everything you see, wahala. Everything you see, someone is cheating you. Everything you see, something bad is happening. You vibrate negative energy. You will attract negativity. Number five, those that refuse to have a vision for their future. There are many of us who are very, very talented and anointed. But we have, or we are living our lives without any strategic plan, goal, or vision for the future. Many of us are just living from day to day. <laughs> it's an existential lifestyle with no goals to accomplish. Friends, you can't afford to live for the now. Your life is far more precious. I mean, 
He walked into my office. Someone called me and said, Pastor, I'm sending a young man. Please use your contacts. Help him. He has a uh, master's in this. Da, 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 da. Okay. Come. Son, what do you want? Anything? I said, my friend, leave my office. I don't have anything to give to you. I can't help such people. Anything? What do you want in life? Let your life count for something. Can't just be anything. No goals, no dreams, no plan, no listen, <laughs> no vision. God can't help you. The help He has arranged for you cannot locate you. It has to locate you in something specific. You know, such people also live very disorderly lives. Uh, we prayed about it. Every disorder, be it back to order. See, when, when, when a life is disorderly, you get up in the morning, the day runs you. You don't run your day. I can help find you. God, our God is very purpose driven. For the help He has arranged for you, it's not just in. Everything is in specific things. As you set out for you. I mean, I've been to Toronto severally, but I don't know the city. Everywhere looks alike to me. <laughs> Everywhere looks alike to me. <laughs> we call it raw, raw in my eyes, raw, raw. Now, if I don't have an address, <laughs> where am I headed? I'm going to Toronto. What's Toronto? Toronto. Okay, in Toronto, where are you going to? I'm going to Toronto. What sort of life is that? I mean, see how ridiculous it sounds. That's how many of us are living our lives. No plan. Oh, we got help. No strategic vision. I want to marry. I want to get a house. Okay, so you want how? No plan. Praise God. Do you want help? God's help is available. Those who are successful in this life have a compelling vision which drives them daily, which feeds their souls even more than their desire for money. Friends, inside of every believer is a God-given kingdom vision for their future. Now, if you refuse to tap into that Guiding light. If you will not make use of that value as your barometer for success, you can't locate God's help. Praise God. Number seven. Is it six? Some of you are following me closely. Those who live in self-deception. Those who live in self-deception. There are many people who are living lives of denial regarding their relationships with God and their families and all things regarding their inner and outer lives. They are simply in denial. Now, the sad thing is that denial is the first step to outright deception. In that deception, a person concocts an alternative. A false reality that continually feeds their mind and emotions with things that they want to hear and believe about themselves and their key relationships. What this does, it insulates them from the word of the Lord. It keeps them 
from the word of others. It keeps them from the reach of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you confront people like this, they become so upset and blame you for not understanding them. You don't understand. Have you been told that before? You don't understand. What is there to understand and not understand? Friends, or they will accuse you wrongly for not one who likes them. God's help can't locate such people unless they make the needed paradigm shift. Hallelujah. I've seen this a lot. Only this afternoon it played out. I have a guy in the, in the church. He lives in the U.S., but he works in Nigeria, so he comes frequently. His family is in the U.S. And he's been enamored with the fact that Christians are doing birth control and that the Muslims are marrying four or five wives. <laughs> While we have one man, one what? wife. So his calculation is that by 2040, what? Nigeria will be a Muslim country. <laughs> That's his calculation. Mathematically, he's a, he's a science person. And that if Nigeria becomes a Muslim country, we're, we're, we're done, we're done. He has raised this things with me before. I told him that by that time, I'm dead. <laughs> 2050. I told him I'm dead. And that God will take care of my children. <laughs> but seriously speaking, I told him that the redemptive plan of God cannot be thwarted. Do you know that there are more Christians in China than in Nigeria? More Christians in Iran than in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah. More Christians in, um, in Korea, South, uh, North Korea than in Nigeria. Not South Korea. South Korea is a Christian country. North Korea. And yet in all of these countries to be a Christian is a crime. I say for, for, for you to you know, insist that you know, we must stop birth control. We must, you know, um, single girls must just go and have babies. So long as they are Christians, single women, you know, uh, 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 we must have more children. I, I said to him, it can't work. Canada was supposed to be a Christian country, am I correct? Britain was supposed to be a Christian country, am I correct? America was supposed to be a Christian country, am I correct? LGBTQ, where are they from? Whose, whose children are they? The atheists, the Antichrist people in the, in the West, where are they? Whose children are they? They are children of preachers. That you are a Christian man, that you are a preacher does not mean your child will become a believer. That's no guarantee. You have to work at it. We talked about it yesterday. They have to fight for their destiny to keep them in the church. They don't want to come to church. Our church is boring to them the way we do church. We do church. They are too full of energy. We can't reach them. So what's the guarantee? But you know, he's so enamored. He's just caught up in it. And <coughs> hear me, child of God. As it's it's, it's self-deception to think that the thing that you said or you say is the only correct thing and you don't want to look at someone else. When you do an MBA, we do what we call, um, remind me now, uh, presentations, seminars. You sit before your classmates and you present the topic you are given to treat and they tear it into shreds. Is that not so? And the supervisor is there watching. Eh? Not, not the thesis, seminars, seminars, presentations. And then they tear it to pieces and 
After everybody, the supervisor gets up to say, okay, this is correct, this is correct, they are correct, you are correct, they are wrong, you are correct, you are wrong, this is the correct thing, and you go, you put it back together again. So that you have an open mind. Is that not so? So we go to school in part to have an open mind. But when your mind is closed, it is, this is how we do it. If not so, it cannot be. You are finished. Self-deception. Praise God. Help cannot locate you. Number seven, those who do not want to pay the price for success. Let me make, make some speed now. Those who do not pay the price for success. They do not want to pay the price for success. Now, the law of value says, come easy, go easy. That's what the law of value says. It's in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. Please give out that scripture. Proverbs eleven thirteen, in the message transliteration. 13, 11, sorry. In the message transliteration. Proverbs 13, 11. Message. Is it message? Yes. Can you put it here so they can read with me? Let's read together. I want to go. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> Pays off. That's the law of value. In other words, anything of value comes at a price. And if it has no price, it is of no value. For it is the value of a thing that determines its quality and significance. Is that not so great? Many of us want the perks of success, but don't want to pay the price for success. Such people offend the law of value. Help cannot locate them. When I was a young minister, please listen to me, my singular desire was to be a global prophetic intercessor. So my very first trip to UK, I went to South Korea, and on my way back, all the money I had, not one dress for my wife, not one dress for myself, books. On prayer, intercession, prophetic operations, all kinds of books. I actually bought books that God asked me to burn off. I bought the Satanic Bible and the rituals. Yeah, you want to deal with the devil? You want to know what he, do, he knows? You, you want to know what he does? So I bought the Satanic Bible. That's a Bible called Satanic Satan. You've not heard about it before. <laughs> I had the copy with the rituals. I started reading this intelligence gathering to be able to defeat my enemy. Are you with me? My, my friends, my young ministers, they will come to my house and they will laugh. Say, <laughs> you're crazy, man. You don't read love for this. This one like they read. I didn't answer them. What were they doing? They were going from man of God to man of God to tap grace. Praise God. They will go here and they will. Today, as I speak, I'm still here. Many of them are out of ministry. What am I saying? You got to pay the price. You got to what? Whatever we do in life, we are called to sacrifice our time, our money, our invest our resources, invest our talents, be committed on a long haul dimension. Be part of the grueling, grueling, grueling process with many setbacks until we reach our peak performance. How does a woman want to be a mother who doesn't want to go through labor? Even that one. Ask a pregnant woman the inconveniences she goes through. 
from the scattering of our entire hormone system when the baby comes in. And the battles she had to fight to have comfort throughout the pendency of the pregnancy. Yeah, you can be a mother by adopting a child, no doubt, but I tell you, it's not the same. I know the law says it's the same. We know in reality it is not. Praise God. You must pay the price. Sacrifice is needed in every area we desire success. Including our business, including our marriages, including relationships with our children, with our spouses. As we lead in ministries, departments, as we lead our churches, everywhere we find the privilege to lead. Sacrifice is required. It's part of the price we pay to succeed. Friends, God's help is not available for a person to the fullness of their destiny if they don't want to pay the price and work hard at self-improvement. Number eight, those whose primary agenda is individualism and not kingdom. There are some of us whose only agenda in life is to advance our own agenda. We use everyone that comes around us to follow our nest. After a while, people will discover that you are a user. They will abandon you. We don't want to work with a team of flow in the context of other people of God. No. These type of ministers want others to pour their lives into them, but they are not really ever willing to pour back into the lives of others and the kingdom of God. Except the people are serving their own purposes. Truth is, those who only want to use the church of God to advance their own agendas in ministry have greatly limited their own lives. It is the truth. God always backs away from such people until they change. Are you still listening to me here? This is because we are all called to seek God's kingdom first. Seek your first. God's kingdom and his righteousness. How many things shall be added to you? Friends, we must be willing to sacrifice our resources and invest our time for the good of the body of Christ. What this does, in turn, it releases our great test destiny even more than if we only concentrate on our own agendas. I am a living example. Praise God. I can easily have been my own geo. Easily. Praise God. But I stayed in jail. Not simply because God said so. But because I also understand that it's better for me. Praise God. So, I create my own set of circumstances. I create my own set of situations as I pour myself into God that assembly. I'm my own boss. I am my because the credibility of the head is upon me. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you are kingdom oriented, friends, what the kingdom carries speaks for you. A lone ranger can never attract the help of God in the kingdom. Are you still with me? Number nine, those who refuse to keep covenant. Those who refuse to do what? Very talented, some of us. <laughs> With great calling on our lives, but frustrate God's help because we do not know how to keep covenant. We are seldom faithful to our obligations and easily break confidence. 
Meanwhile, we expect others to be faithful to us. Are you still here with me? And we get angry when things happen not our way. But we don't always think and ask ourselves, are we doing things the other way of other people? No. It must always be my way. If not my way, everything scatters. No way. God's help cannot locate you. Are you still with me here? Hello? Are you still with me? <laughs> Listen to me, child of God. A person who doesn't keep their word at whatever cost will be easy to slander their neighbor. Think about it. How does that connect? That's what it is. If you are unable to keep your word, when you see someone who keeps their word, it will offend you. And you will slander the person. Such a person can't get God's help. Because they will know you. They will what? Finally, number 10. Those who lack transparency, humility, and integrity. God requires us to walk in the light, in, 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 in his light as he is in the light. He requires us to walk in the light as he is in the light. First John chapter 1 verse 7. He also wants us to confess our faults to one another and pray for one another that we may be made whole. James 5 16. Those that do not admit their faults and confess their sins cannot have the kind of relationship with those God has brought their way to help them to go to the next level. Now, friends, it's important for us to have transparent relationships. Hallelujah. Amen. People know when you are transparent. If you are hideous, they know. And when they know that you are not transparent, it's not them. You have raised the blockade for your life. What help you can get from them, you will never get. When people deal with you and they discover that you are arrogant, you were talking about it at the beginning. Friends, people will treat you with a long stick. As they say, they will eat with you with a long spoon. Because arrogance puts off everybody, including God. Mm. Arrogance is the demonstration of pride. Mm. And God does what? Mm. He resists the proud. Mm. I've done things for people I did not plan to do for them. But because as I dealt with them, their humility took over my heart. I was talking about my spiritual father. I've never seen such a humble man. I mean, perhaps if he was very aggressive and oppressive, I would have run away. Maybe. But I'm telling you, Humility. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's done me many things that got me upset. Many, many things. But you know, mm -hmm. I was sad. I didn't like this guy. Really? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yes. You don't find that. Mm -hmm. He's above 70. He's older than myself. He's my boss. He's my Jew, my father in the Lord. What is it? Really? I'm sorry, Israel. Why don't I want to serve such a man? <laughs> I'm mad at the Chris. <laughs> I want to serve such a man. I like the oil on his head. Are, are you with me? I can do anything for him. Anything. 
humility. He is integrity personified. Yes, sir. If he gives you his word, he keeps it. I can't promise you something tomorrow you come, he has changed his mind. Nah. He keeps his word. So all he needs to do is to call me in the middle of the night. Early in the morning, anytime I'm ready to start. And, and that helped. I mean, I, I live in Abuja, but I, I'm from River State. I know Putakot very well. It's my town. His son needed to be in Putakot. He called me. My son is going to Putakot. I, I made all the arrangements before the boy got there. Help. Assuming that it's uh, <laughs> an oppressor of my life. Say, ah, so I'm not in I'm, I'm not in Putakot now. I'm in Abuja right now. <laughs> we think of I thought they go to Putakot, they call me. <laughs> Help. Praise God. The very first time I came to Abuja and I needed help. And I went to see someone. And I mentioned the fact that I'm from God Light. Ah, God Light. Pastor Wally. Say yes. Ah, I said, good man. Help came to me. Mm-hmm. Integrity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the Bible says integrity preserves a man. Yeah. Are you... One of those 10 people, you're blocking yourself. And what God said to me to deal with us tonight is to pray for you. Is that okay? It's to pray for you. I'll lead you in three prayer points and I'll pray for you. The help will look at you. You need to go to the next level. I need to go to the next level. I was talking about the fact of help on Sunday. Relationships. Relationships. That's why I'm here. I've spent two weeks in Canada. Are you with me? I didn't pay house rent. I live in an upper end Airbnb. Upper end. Upper end. Nice place. Food is supplied. Everything. If I had taken an hotel, that would cost me a lot of money. You saw hear what I'm saying? I went to Calgary, relationship. Three bedroom. Airbnb. Everything. <laughs> I flee to Ottawa. Ticket bought for me. Relationship. Am I talking here? Yes, sir. Now, if I'm a 419 man, <laughs> I call these people. I mean, <laughs> I, we are talking, you know, in this place, we walk, sir. Walk, sir. I'm, at, I'm at work, sir. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? My talk, sir. <laughs> I was not invited. I came. I was received. That's a help. That's a help. We've been around five states in the United States of America. Nobody invited us. I just call, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming. Ah, you're coming. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello. Integrity. Someone say integrity. They can vouch for me that I will not come and destroy their work. You someone hear what I'm saying? The boss thing that I went to, the senior pastor was not in time. He was in Nigeria. He said, ah, sir. I have prepared. You need to see 
I mean, if he was around, he could not have done how they took care of me and mama because they don't want their pastor to hear that they fell his hand. <laughs> Four days. Put us in a marriage hotel, everything we needed. It's only a phone call. Someone say help. help. Someone say help. help. Rise on your feet. Just lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Just lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Learn to take responsibility for yourself. Develop a heart to seek God. Draw close to those who can hold you accountable. Have a positive outlook on life. Have a practical vision for your future. Refuse to live in self-deception. Pay the price for your success. Take down your individualism and selfish agenda. Have a kingdom agenda. Keep covenants. Live a life of transparency, humility, and integrity. Say with me, Father, keep me from opposing myself anymore in my walk with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you're praying to the Father. You're asking him. 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 Talk to him. Talk to him. Keep me from opposing myself anymore in my work with you. Why should I be my own enemy? Stopping myself from coming into the help that God has ordained to take me to my next level. Why? Are you praying? Are you praying? Pray for yourself, child of God. Take this moment very seriously. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Say with me, Father, I receive grace to shift from every terrible attitude by which I hinder your help for my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lift up your voice, pray that prayer. That's a, that's a good prayer to pray. I receive grace to shift from every terrible attitude by which I hinder your help for my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is somebody praying? In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Say with me, Father, open my eyes to recognize your help for my next level. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, lift up your eyes and pray. Let the Lord open your eyes. Lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. Let the Lord open your eyes to recognize your next level help. Yes! I took time to teach. I didn't preach. That you may understand. God could use anybody. A believer, unbeliever. A small person, a big person to help you. Let the Lord open your eyes. To see that man that carries your help. That woman that carries your help. The person may not be the type of person you're thinking about. But if they carry your help, you must recognize them. Yes. Yes. Yes.
in Jesus matchless name we pray help me open your hands like this and the song is simple feel my blood I lift it up come and quench this testing of my soul bread from heaven Feed me till I work no more. Is my cup fill it up and make me whole? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come and quench. This dusty of my soul, right from heaven, fill me till I'm worth no more. Is my God fill it up? One more time. and my God. Your people have listened to me for an hour. Sharing with them your heart as you laid it in my heart. Everyone here requires the next level movement. But we all need help. Lord, Let the heavens be open now. Not just over us, but unto each and every one of us. Father, pour out your grace. For according to Ephesians 4, 7, you have given grace to each of us according to the measure. That you have ordained for each and every one of us. Lord, that grace is the help. It's the oil we require to lubricate our way. That hindrances and contentions, oppositions, will no longer rise up to keep us down. Lord, I cry out to you. Pour the oil out right now. Amen. Father, pour the oil out. Amen. The oil for lubrication. Amen. Let every step, Lord, land where you have ordained it to land. Amen. No more missteps. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. No more wrong steps. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Lord, we distance ourselves from the ten things that have the capacity, the capacity to keep us from coming into your health, which you have arranged for us. Now, Lord, into each and every life here represented, I command the release of that health. May your help locate you. Amen. That 
specific help you require. May it find you. Amen. And propel you to your next level. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I speak against contenders. I speak against delay agents. I come against the opposition party. Those that say you cannot emerge. I speak against their very foundations. Let the earth on which they stand to contend against you swallow them up. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. By raising up the foundational dimensions of God that brings about stability. And by reason of his word that says the movement for us is from one level of glory to another. May your movement begin. Amen. May your movement begin. Amen. Your movement into relevant help. Amen. May it start now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May nothing ever shut your progress down anymore. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May the forces of life come into alignment with you. Because you are in alignment with God's agenda for your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every stone the enemy has placed before you to hinder you. You step on it right now. It becomes a stepping stone. It becomes a stepping stone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every wall of offense to keep you hemmed in. That those who are to help you won't find you. That you won't locate them. Ah! Every satanic covering Raised to cover you up from the eyes of them that must help you. By the thunderbolts of God. I command the light of God to shine. Amen. And I decree those walls to collapse before you. Amen. Let hell find you. Amen. Let hell find you. Amen. Let hell find you. Amen. I draw out of you testimonies of progress. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. We'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. Father, thank you for your help. For Center of Life Church International. Lord, thank you for your help. For Center of Life Church International. Amen. Lord, thank you for your help. For Center of Life Church International. Amen. Lord, the lifting has come. Amen. Who can hinder? Who can say to you, don't do what you are set up to do? Lord, it's in Job 9.14 that we read who can harden himself against you and not prosper. Lord, break into pieces. Smash completely. Every network of delay. Every network of confusion. Every network of distraction. Amen. Every network of detraction. Amen. Designed to keep center of life church international down. Lord, those you have lifted, they remain lifted. Those you are blessed, they remain blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 
We give you praise. We give you glory. Lord, we will obey your specific instructions and you will confirm your word. Because you always confirm the words of your servants and you perform the counsel of your messengers. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please put your hands together to so welcome Pastor Bayo. I want all of us to stand in honor of the gift that God has sent to us. Now, now uh, this is an amazing time with Jesus. You know, uh, just for you to know, we did not stream it because I want people to be here in person. And I'm going to give instruction now to the media to upload this all our platforms to bless our world. Help me let somebody know you better go on all our platform and listen to this again. In fact, I will encourage those of us that are even here to listen to this again. What a word from heaven. What a word from heaven. What a word from heaven. Ezekiel, please, you know, like I've mentioned, and the team, make sure you upload this, you know, on all our platforms. So that, you know, you will all have access to listen to this again. It's going to be on all the radio that we have. I mean, on our radio that play 24 7. I want to thank you, sir, that you follow what the Holy Ghost put in your heart. And I mean, some of you saw some, you know, instruction on the possibility of us even have to answer questions if you have one. I believe many questions in your heart already answered. Hallelujah. And if you're a leader and a minister, you can see and of course come to the understanding why some people are stranded and why some things need some correction and why you yourself need some adjustment. I believe we are going to a new level. And I want to thank you, sir. We want to appreciate you. You are one of the helps <laughs> in this season that God has sent to us. Now, God spoke to me and said, this month is going to be our month of fruitful season. And when the Lord, you know, spoke that word to me, I just began to, you know, proclaim it. And you can see everything coming together. God began to give us better understanding. Because how will you be fruitful if you do not have divine help? And this is very important. And I believe, God, that you are going to have remarkable testimony. Yeah. Mama, thank you for yesterday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, it has been an amazing weekend and tomorrow... <laughs> If today is this good, <laughs> but I would say better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And I want you to please, of course, you know, Sunday, a lot of people that uh, struggle to be in church midweek, struggle to be in other opportunities like this, for us, some for, you know, maybe good reasons. Uh, we are talking about yesterday, and women, you did amazingly well yesterday for you to push through, to come on a Friday evening. I mean, I was really encouraged to see the number of a lot of people online, but like you said, sir, you must sacrifice. You must sacrifice. You must sacrifice. And I know the people say, well, you know what, well, they will upload it, I'm going to watch it again, but I'm telling you, it's not the same. It's not the same. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you tomorrow, and, you know, make sure you are here on time. But we want to thank you, sir. We want to appreciate you. And tomorrow, we are going to do our collective appreciation and we are going to celebrate the gift that God has sent to us, the gift that God has sent to us. And we really, really, we are blessed. And I emphasize this again and again, that God has given us fathers in this house to 
guide us, encourage us. I'm always careful of a man that has no one that can correct him. No one to direct him. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, let us honor the man of God one more time. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Thank you so much, sir. Your feet will always be beautiful in this house. And you can be rest assured when you are in Toronto, you are home. Amen. Anytime, any day. And we thank God. And you, you know, I've received it. I'm, I'm meditating on it. And I know it's a word from the Lord. International. Amen. International. Amen. Center of Life Church International. Amen. Center of Life Church International. Amen. A confirmation I think three years ago, I think I shared with us, the Lord began to speak to me about the global aspect of the ministry. You know, put some, you know, and I did I didn't think even I even mentioned it to Apostle, put some things together and began to I want to see how we can also be a blessing to what God is doing in Africa now, beginning with, you know, Nigeria, the land that God used to raise us, fed us, nurtured us. Most of you, if you are in Nigeria here, you got saved in that land. Salvation came to you in that place. You are released into the ministry in that place. And don't take for granted. What beauty. What made you. And so, you know what, the Lord put in my heart, of course, we started some registration. We did all of that. Pastor Solomon, all the effort that we all put together in leadership, even set up an account. Put, put everything together. Praise the Lord. Waiting for an opportune time. Asking God, what should we do? How should we do it? And of course, God began to speak to me about the United States. Opening some doors there. And then, I knew when the man of God by you know, spirit of prophecy said international. I understand fully what the man of God was saying. Shout it with me, international. international. And what it means is this. You are going international. Amen. You see, that's one thing about God. That's one thing about God. I was saying to somebody that, you know, I will go to minister's conference in Texas and I will go with three ministers. For Solomon, and the journey, most people that have been with me, Mr. Inca, and then some other parts in the United States. And some ministers will ask me and called me, why are you doing this? Why are you investing too much? He said, you, you may likely regret this. I'm, I'm saying that. At times, I've not even said this publicly. He said, they will be lead to it. When you open them up to many things, then they would look at you and said, and some of them even said, some of the things we are hearing here, they shouldn't hear it. Because at times they are correcting us. I said, I want to be corrected. I want to learn better. I want to grow. Let me say to you, and when you emphasize humility, may God help you to be humble. Amen. I don't care what you think you have. I don't care what you think you have accomplished. As a matter of fact, I'm saying to myself, it doesn't matter what you think you have. It doesn't matter what you think you have attained. I think you are disqualified the day you think you have fully arrived. We have to be very careful. Hallelujah. And thank God for all the men of God and ministers in this house. They have never abused it. Of course, you always have one or two people that you wonder whether they really appreciate the investment. But I just want to thank God, sir. Those 10 things that they have shared with us, Please, please, I can share with you my note. I'm going to take some of them to use it to preach after I've applied it to my life. Is that not what we are taught today? Because some people, they get all the notes. That's why not have worked for them. Please take it seriously. Center of Life Church. And we really give God praise for that. We have made provision for you to eat before you go home <laughs> because you know that it has been a long day. And some people, like my wife, you know, Thank God for our sisters, our mothers. They have a particular time. If they don't eat at that time, you know, but some of us will have some graces. <laughs> Hallelujah. My wife, I thought, will rebuke me. <laughs> Thank God for correction. <laughs> and we need that also as well. But, you know, we have some things just to 
it will be a blessing. Uh, but I want to uh, really appreciate, you know, Apostle told us one of the, we have a minister that came and he was telling me about him before he came that I'm not, I wasn't too sure that he would be here, but thank God uh, he, he, he could make it and he's here with us. I want to personally honor and appreciate Pastor Isaiah Olujimi. Uh, he's the pastor of Prayer Tabernacle International Ministry. We honor you, sir. We celebrate you. Thank you so much. Since we are in Canada together, our fellowship continues. Amen. <laughs> Such a good opportunity to be here. God bless you, sir. And I know you came together. And I want you to please, you know, I want to encourage you. And I, we have done this before. We do it again and again. The man of God and the woman of God, you know, they are blessed people. You just need to look around them and see how God has blessed them. Because tomorrow, by the grace of God, I'll be encouraging as they go in. So a seed. Amen. Amen. So a seed. Bible says, and I will teach it, and I will preach it tomorrow, when you hear the word, and the word of God being communicated to you, Bible says we should bless those who are our teachers. So I will be encouraging you, you know, to sow a seed. And it's not of compulsion, but the Lord will give you understanding, and you can release your heart. And nothing is too small. Amen? You give your level. Amen? And as you do so, you know, God will bless. And as a church, we do our part. But I'm just saying that it's an opportunity for you when that comes. And when that time comes, even tomorrow. And you shall be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Before I dismiss the meeting, you know, please, can we honor and appreciate our daddy and our mommy as we allow them also with, you know, Pastor Isaiah to go to the pastor's office. Hallelujah. Come on, let us celebrate it. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. You can do better than that. It has been a fantastic time in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I think this is amazing. It's 6 o'clock. By my time, we plan to finish 6 o'clock, even though we didn't start 6 o'clock. But you know what? Uh, sorry. We didn't start 3 o'clock. Yeah, but you know, I really want to appreciate those of you that could make it. I know it's a stretch. Friday, especially those of you that have to drive long distances, the Lord will reward you in the mighty name of Jesus. So we will receive their ministry again tomorrow. It's going to be phenomenal. And we are going to just rejoice in God's presence together. Hallelujah. So please do not forget, uh, I would like the praise team. I want to quickly connect with you. Please, immediately after the grace, you know, just meet me here uh, very briefly. And of course, uh, uh, I believe we do not have any other information to share with you. We will share all of the information tomorrow by the grace of God. And next week, Sunday, is going to be our things, you know, uh, church celebration service. It's going to be amazing. I think they may likely have to wait behind briefly tomorrow for 